In this latest citizen con, they showed us a bit more into server meshing, persistent entity streaming, and replication layers. Now, just quickly, when you join a server, everything starts to stream into action on the server renderer. This is also streamed and connected in on your client you're playing on, and it's just like joining a server like normal. There is also an entity graph, which is an online database that is powering what you see. For example, a player would be an entity. Now when you join, you get unstowed to their live entity database and your player will also have everything attached to it on the database. For example, there may be glass, armor, customizations, just anything you have on you, weapons, just, it goes on and on. Now you're in the game, you are within an object container, basically just the place you are currently in, like a room. Now what is an object container? To talk about this, we have to go bigger. Object and entity streaming. Now this is how the Stantum solar system is set up. They take Stantum to be one large map. This contains every single object inside the solar system. Now because this is such a big map and lots of entities are in it, this solar system is split up into a hierarchy of object containers which can be streamed in and out individually. We start off with the main object container. This is the sun, the planets and the moons around it, all the big things you kind of expect to be the primary layer. Each location then has its own object container. For example, Walla and Lyria inside Art Corp would be different specific object containers. Now, if we take a closer look at one, you will find all the entities inside of the container. For example, a space station orbiting the moon would have its own object container. This repeats and carries on going, so for example, in the space station, it could be set up with multiple object containers or rooms of its own. Now this goes down into pretty small details, so I won't go too far into it, but it carries on the same path again and again. Now things like NPCs, players and ships are dynamic entities, well most of them at least. Now dynamic is something that is constantly changing or active or progressing, of course. Now these entities are also made up of a hierarchy too. For example, a player entity will have their body, then underseat, then armour attached, and then guns and so on and so on going from highest to bottom. These are all shared entities of a player, an entity being something with a distinct and independent existence. Now the streaming system treats these entities of the players as groups, so that things like ships treat them as one unit and not separate entities, so that you and your items seamlessly transfer into different object containers, which are the rooms I was on about earlier. So basically, the player and items on you are grouped as one thing. Now remember that an entity could be anything really, so on your ship, a turret could be a separate entity, and then, well, it could have many, many, many different things in it, so I won't go into the details as it follows the same path as I said earlier. So now you know what object containers are and how entity streaming works, you can see in the background footage that each of these coloured zones are their own object container, the rooms. To break it down, this player here that you can see on the database and in the game is in this object container here. Now when he moves into another object container, the database moves him to and all of his grouped entities, for example, like his helmet and undersuit. This works with other entities too. As you can see, he used a buggy and pingus, which act the same as players themselves because they're active and always changing, so class as entities. So now remember how all of the Stantum system is one map. Well, now because loading all of this on your client or game and on the server would be very, very resource heavy. This is where streaming and replication comes in. This allows them, RSI or the game, to stream object containers and the groups inside individually instead of all at once. When the game server starts, all entities and object containers of that solar system are loaded into the local memory of that game server. This is not streamed in however, or loaded or rendered however it makes sense. Their initial state and server memory is just stored in the local server memory. Now, you join that server. You have a thing which is called a streaming bubble around you, like a really big force field, let's say. Object containers, as well as groups that are inside your bubble in the server, will stream its content and then be replicated or loaded on your client or game. Now, as the player moves around, entities and object containers that leave the streaming bubble will become unbound to the player bubble, and the replication layer, which is something I'll talk about later, will remove these things from your client slash game. Then, as something enters it, it is now bound again. They call this entity bind culling, basically binding and unbinding entities and object containers. If an entity or object container has no player's bubble needing it to be streamed, then it will go back to the state of just being unused and stored in local memory. 
So now replication layers. Basically, this is you have a server node of so many people inside, of course, and this server or node, they're both kind of the same thing, communicates back to the replication layer. A bit like, let's say you're a higher up in command and then the little things below you, they report back to you. You're the main kind of dude. As you can see in the background footage, this is three different servers loading the object containers and you can see all three in live time even if you're on a different server, which is basically meaning you can have an infinite player game and no need to join people's servers, just meet up at a certain place and you'll both see each other anyway. Now the way this will impact 30k's is that instead of being 30k'd, when your server crashes or it's removed for some reason, you'll be transferred onto a different or new server. And because the replication layer stored all of the entities and things that went on, it can seamlessly load you back into the game without you having to leave and rejoin. And that's 30k protection basically. So in short, server meshing will be a way for different people on different servers to be able to see each other in interact in-game and with in-game entities like grey cats or pingus, for example, on the floor, without even knowing if you're on a different server, which sounds really, really great. So, well, I'm not going to go any further as it just gets more and more confusing and they do say a lot more about it, but it's not too needed information. But basically the progression is good and they are doing very well at the moment, in my opinion at least. But honestly this does take a while to get your head around and if you don't get it on the first time you've got to watch it a few times and that's fair enough. Or if you need to watch their official video I've got a link to that in the description. But it's simple when you do get it, uh, for me at least, <laughs> even if I do know it correctly. But I may have been a little wrong about this but anyways I hope you enjoyed and well that's me, Duffer, out.